of the horrifying number of foreign criminals claiming to be Christian in order to escape deportation. Indeed, a Bangladeshi man who served 12 years behind bars for murdering his wife successfully appealed against the Home Office's attempts to deport him because he claimed he was a Christian. A judge ruled that he would be at risk in his predominantly Muslim country in Bangladesh. I'm not quite sure why, but there we go. It comes just days after a church minister revealed that he's baptised hundreds of asylum seekers in the sea in South Wales. If you're watching us on TV or online, there's a clip of it there. Only for half of them to completely disappear immediately afterwards. Well, who could have... Who would have bet a tenner on that, eh? Speaking last week, a spokesperson for the Church of England said the Abdul Azidi case, this is the um, uh, clap of acid attack alleged, Abdul Azidi case is clearly a shocking and distressing incident. Our thoughts and prayers are with all of those affected by it. As we've said, it is the role of the Home Office and not the Church to vet asylum seekers. However, Calvin McKenzie joins me now, uh, former editor of The Sun. Uh, well, it's becoming increasingly, I think, actually the Church of England's fault, isn't it? I mean, if they're baptising all of these people, they are part and parcel of this, and we've got situations where a Bangladeshi bloke who's murdered his wife still can't be deported. Why? Well, because he's now a Christian, which he's obviously right. not. Right. So he's not a Christian, and even if he were a Christian, he has murdered his wife. He is Bangladeshi. I honestly don't care what happens to him back in his homeland, mm. right? The man's a killer. Yeah. Why, why should it be our responsibility to, to nurture him and find him work or, or, or do whatever it is for it? This is a problem for his own country. And it, it's, a, it's his own country whose job it is to defend him. If there are, unless they are a nation yeah. where, uh, if they are a Muslim nation, where actually they think it's quite a good thing for Christians to be taken apart. And there are, of course, countries within the Middle East in which that view is very much predominant. So it's an absolute disgrace. This. Mm. The Church of England's role in all this, and not only the Church of England, other churches as yes, well, true. Baptist churches and the like, right? Uh, uh, which is the one connected with Azidi, right? Or no, they have a role, and they have chosen to say we are all God's people. And then when this goes wrong, then they say, oh, it's the Home Office. I'm afraid they are led by the Archbishop of Canterbury, who stands up constantly and says, vote people, come on over. And on that basis, if they want preferment within the Church of England, then the way to get it is obviously to baptise people. Should victims of asylum seekers who've converted to Christianity and then gone on to commit crimes and where they've used their conversion to Christianity as the basis to stay in the country, be able to sue Justin Welby? Well, that is a very good idea. And I think they should definitely... Well, the, the real question is, the real question is, why does the church, whoever it is, whether it's this pastor, by the way, who shows he, he, he's basically in favour of doing this, why do they think it's a good idea to be duped in this way? They know full well that these people are not Christians, right? So why do they do it? Mm. What is in it for them? Mm. Is there some donation to the church being made? Does it make them feel better personally? These questions have to be answered. And I would be grateful if somebody would pass a law which basically said you have to actually face some strict... I mean, there was one judge pointed out to another judge that actually, how on earth could that person be con uh, be converted when in fact he'd only been in the country five weeks and hadn't mentioned it on his arrival? Yeah. So in five weeks he went from Islam to the good well, Lord. and the conveyor belt is being exposed. So what we have now, and this is according to testimony of people within the church, was uh, Muslim men at the back of the church with water cash in their pocket, a ready army of people waiting to be baptised, then photographs going immediately on Facebook, and then, shock horror, hours later, phone calls from immigration lawyers asking that vicar or that priest or whoever to go on record and vouch for that person being a Christian. Now, so, so, so the you conveyor belt. right? So the conveyor belt is it led by the is it led by well, lefty the core, lawyers? Well, as the core, it's the, it's the lawyers, but it's everyone involved, isn't it? Isn't it? But at the core, it's the lawyers who then put pressure on a you know a village priest or whatever to say, oh, do you know this person's going to get lynched if they go back to their country? How can you have that on their conscience? But Welby's got to stand up about this. Yes, but he doesn't want to, does he? Mm. He doesn't want to, and I probably, and, and probably, it is probably the end of the Welbys running the Church of England. We need, we surely, no wonder, no wonder nobody goes to to a Church of England churches. What, why would they go there? Nobody believes in anything except bringing in lots of people illegally. Essentially, it's quite well, right. Well, the the irony will be obviously if it all comes out, which it appears to be coming out, that the church has been complicit in helping a load of people who are Christian 
lie about being Christian to then stay in the country and reduce the number of people actually going to churches. I mean, they talk about self-defeating. I've got one more for you, though, because uh, Grant Shapps, our Defence Secretary, has hit out at the...